Hey guys, Marco here. Hopefully everyone had a great spooky season. I know I spent a lot of it watching somewhat creepy movies because I'm not super big into horror, but I was dipping my feet into it. <laughs> and yes, although it is sad that Halloween is done, it does not mean that we can't stop talking about it and Halloween related things. Now, what am I referring to, you may ask? So about a week before Halloween, I released a video of my sister and I, mainly my sister, decorating some chocolate covered Halloween themed styled strawberries. And I threw that video on on YouTube and on Instagram and you guys really seem to love it. And since I enjoyed making it so much as well, I figured we could take a look at the behind the scenes of it, kind of what I was thinking in terms of shots and how I put the whole thing together in the editing room. But if you guys haven't watched the video first, watch it first. It's only like a minute, 50 seconds, whatever, and then come back and watch this because then it's going to make a lot more sense or just watch it after. I really don't care. <laughs> so let's crack open up Premiere and take a look at how I made this thing. So obviously when filming all of this, it was real time. I had to do it all in order. So we started with washing the strawberries, which I thought would be a great opening because slow motion water looks so cool. <laughs> and what I love about this little opening here is that it sets the tone really well of what we're expecting. I think it's that music, it's the initial shot, that like spooky vibe, but at the same time cinematic. That was my main goal when searching for this song because I knew I was gonna shoot everything in slow motion I needed to find something with like a slower pace that really flows everything together. I think this song was perfect for the piece. But first we get this really cool edit, which is honestly really simple to do. For those who don't know, it's literally just a mask. You're creating a mask past the sink and everything after it pretty much disappears into darkness. So this way, everything that's black screen can now be other footage. And so we get this, which looks great. Add the little whoosh sound effect, perfect. Then we get our melting of the chocolate, which I had shot so much, and I kid you not, so much B-roll of my sister putting stuff in the microwave, taking it out. It looked really cool, but I ultimately just left it to like these three shots to really keep it fast paced because I only wanted it to be like a minute for Instagram so on but also because I remember something that my teacher told me back in school was that when you're shooting when you're editing remember the rule of thirds and that's not the framing rule of thirds that's the make sure you get three different angles of what you're shooting or when you're editing you can tell a story in three or so shots so instead of adding all these extra bogus shots you get the one shot of the microwave you get the one of the microwave ticking down and then we see the melted chocolate. Within those three shots, we know the story, we can move on, we don't need all the extra. It's a great little tip, which I really thought hard about after he had said it and I still use even to this day. I hope you guys try it too. <laughs> oh, then we get this awesome slow-mo shot of the chocolate dripping and the continuity between those two, the match cut. Ooh, boom, boom. Oh, it's just, it looks so tasty. That was the feel I wanted. I wanted spooky, cinematic and make you hungry. <laughs> And we get some awesome slow-mo action. But what I love so much about the shot is that it's continuing to tell the story. We're transferring from the bowls into the cup so that we can dip our strawberries into the chocolate. This is a great example of something that's called mise-en-scene. It's a term used in filmmaking on set for theater editing in this case. It's pretty much the structure of a frame or a set to help tell a story. So instead of wasting so many shots to get the point across, hey, we're moving forward to dunk in the chocolate, I do it all in just this one shot. and it works because of it. From there we get the parchment paper ripping, get an awesome little speed ramp. What I think makes this clip so much better is listen to the audio here. Did you catch it? So if you look at the clip in particular here, this is the clip and this right here is the audio for the parchment paper clip. So you can see that it overlays into the previous scene and into the next scene. Sound editing makes a lot of these short videos or just any video in particular. And one little tip that I found that really elevates all projects is not making those sound effects or those clips feel isolated. If I only kept the audio over the parchment paper clip, it would feel very this is the parchment paper clip, this is the this is the strawberry clip, and so on. But because I layer them and you're able to hear it in the background, see it, and then continue with it, it makes everything flow a lot better. Then we get the full dunking sequence, which I love. It looks really cinematic, really great. When choosing out of the clips I had to edit, though, I evidently had so much footage of just every strawberry being dunked. But I remembered something that one of my favorite directors, Guillermo del Toro, said on his commentary for the movie Pacific Rim. And this is referring to like the first 15 minutes of that movie where you see the robot suiting up to get into action. He pretty much describes it as whenever you see a giant action or a giant process happening, you only ever need to see the full thing once. Every time it happens afterwards, you can get away with just showing a few clips here and there. Because the audience is smart enough to know 
if this is happening again, oh, we can draw back. That's what happened. And now this is going in from here. So that's what I tried to do with this scene here. We see the full dunking process laying it on the parchment paper here and then evidently we're gonna have to rinse and repeat for that so then as we move on we can get away with these cool singles cool visuals i love this shot in particular and just little inserts here and there that help tell this story and this next little bit coming up is one of my favorite parts as well that little snippet right there it's following that rule of thirds that we talked about before but what i love so much is that it looks like it's all one continuous shot but it's not right here we have one strawberry and if you pause it you can definitely tell that that is not the same strawberry and neither is that one but because they're all tied together and edited at a good time or makes it look cohesive and that it keeps going it ties them all together creates a little story inside of our big story matches with continuity and makes for a great edit. So look for those little things, the little things that make your overall video and your overall edit a lot better. So this little bit here, I knew I wanted to transition from, okay, we had finished our dunking, now we're getting into decorating. So instead of jumping straight into decorating, I knew I wanted to put this clip first to say, hey, here's my sister's inspiration. This is what we're expecting next. It's that setup and payoff that we're kind of trying to do here. Oh, this shot I love. I love the pulling of the focus. It again goes back to that mise-en-scene idea where we're telling a story in just this one shot and the way it's set up. We see our sprinkles in the foreground. We see the hand reaching for them. We see them getting decorated. We get it and it's simple to understand, which is why I love it. We don't need to see all these extra close-ups with the sprinkles going on as much as they looked cool. We don't, we get the point. From there, we get into our tray. We see the sprinkles in the back over here to know that that part is over. Again, making that story flow. But what I love so much about this is that we go straight from our sprinkles to not the drizzling yet, but a tray because it makes us ask questions as the audience say oh why is she putting them on the tray what's this next step when i was playing around with the order of the footage i originally just cut straight to the drizzling and it felt off we needed to set something up so cutting from the sprinkles to the tray makes us ask questions and then we got our answers to those questions a great thing here too that really helps us edit it's a very small thing is this transition from this scene to this scene there are two different strawberries but the reason the transition between those two clips works is because of the continuity of the hand. We have the drizzle coming over on this one and the drizzle coming back, continuing that motion. So we don't even notice that they're different strawberries. Ah, I fooled you guys, didn't I? <laughs> oh, I love that close up ever. Then we get to our next decorating spot. These look great too as well. Man, she did a great job. Breaking down this section, I tried to do what I did with the last ones. Again, is that that story inside of bigger story. Here we see a similar angled shot to the one before, so it's not too jarring on the eyes, but we see something new that she's doing. Why is she holding the strawberry? Why is there a new bag here? Questions. We then come to this shot, which I love that this is out of focus. We see the inspiration, yet we don't have all of our questions answered yet. We have a good idea but that final payoff is about to come. And that's where this clip comes in. We see the decoration. We're like, oh, that's what she's doing. It looks great. We get a cool transition and that finishes it off on the rack. It's a great little sequence, not from just her decorating, but how it's told. This finally leads into our blood thing, which again, that mise-en-scene idea. I don't need a lot of shots. I just need the one. We only see a handful of strawberries here, not too many. We're getting closer to the end. This is telling a story in just the one shot. So that way we can get to our final decorating shot, which is her putting down the thing. Most of these shots are very organic, but this was one that I instructed my sister, hey, I'm gonna pull in up on this one. You drop the thing here. It's gonna look beautiful, trust me. We did it a few different times and evidently it looks great. Stage shots with those organic ones and making them flow together. It, it honestly boosts the production so much. Then leading to our climax here where we see the close-ups and our final product shot, which I love. The sequence here follows that rule of thirds as well. We see her physically taking her hand away from the strawberry showing, I'm done, this is over. The video is about to wrap up. We see the close-up of the strawberries. I feel like I didn't need any more because we had seen all the close-ups in the video prior. Then our final product shot shows the whole scene, shows that feeling of Halloween, which I wanted this video to portray. And then we cut to black. Boom. 
that's the video. It's, <laughs> quite a bit of work goes into these minute long videos. Who would have thought, eh? <laughs> but yeah, this whole process, my sister and I decorating the strawberries, me making the video, editing it, it was a lot of fun. I love doing stuff like this and I wanted to do a behind the scenes on this to really show the the thought process of when you're making stuff and when you're putting it all together, what you want to achieve with that. Why I do certain things, why you should do certain things and think about certain things when you're making videos. Because it's not always about who gets the best shot or who gets this cool drone photo or whatever. It's how you put all those pieces together and make something out of it. It's a process in filmmaking that I think a lot of people overlook, so don't. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this or at least took something from it. If you did, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I will hopefully see you guys pretty soon. But until then, I am Marco Pereira. Ciao for now.